Picture this. AI understands not only text, but also images, video, and speech. The age of multimodal integrated AI is upon us. What is real and what is fake, and how can we tell the difference? Join us as we explore these and other questions in the AI trends of 2024 and beyond. Let's go. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tom Gadsby, Senior Data Scientist at Career Foundry. I've been working in the field of data for over five years, and I think I'm pretty well placed to tell you about the latest and greatest AI trends. Want to get ahead of the AI revolution? In this video, we'll be looking far into the future to see if we can predict the latest AI trends for 2024 and beyond. So are you ready to take a peek into the future of technology? Also, don't hold me accountable for all of my predictions. I might be wrong about some of them. What about you? Where do you see the future of AI going? What do you think will be the biggest trends in the future? Let us know in the comments below and let's keep the conversation going. I'm aware of five trends that I wanna share with you. So let's start with the first one. Trend number one, bigger language models. Language models are getting bigger and hopefully better. Companies like Inflection AI, OpenAI, and Google are currently training models which will be between 10 and 100 times bigger than GPT-4. You might think that ChatGPT is already so big and can do so much. So what can these bigger models do that the current ones can't? Well, they'll be generally better at all the tasks that ChatGPT can currently do, but they might also develop entirely new behaviors that we haven't seen before. This is called emergent behavior, and it's a pattern that we've seen with other large language models before. Some examples of emergent behavior include text summarization, better mathematical skills, and something called few or zero shot learning. That's when the AI is able to answer questions without having seen any examples or only having seen a few examples. So who knows, maybe the next version of GPT will be able to walk your dog for you, at least in the metaverse. So I said these new models will be loads bigger than ChatGPT, but how big is ChatGPT currently? Well, there are three main ways to measure it, either by model size, by data set size, or by the cost to train. Model size is generally measured in parameters. If a neural network is like a brain, then a parameter is like a neuron in that brain. The human brain has around 100 billion neurons in it. GPT-4 has somewhere between 500 billion and a trillion parameters. And the next model will be orders of magnitude bigger than that. Data set size just means how much data was the model trained on. The big companies don't tell you exactly what they train their models on, but it's fair to assume that they're being trained on most of the internet already, which poses the problem, how can you increase the amount of data on the internet? Well, you can't. But there is a possibility that LLMs will be able to generate their own training data. If that's true, then there really is no limit on how much training data you can pass into these newer, bigger models. The cost to train one of these models is obviously measured in money. And Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, has estimated that it costs around $100 million to train ChatGPT. We can therefore estimate that these future models may cost upwards of a billion dollars to train. By way of reference, there are approximately 30 countries that don't quite have a GDP that high yet. These extreme costs mean that training these massive language models is prohibitively expensive and will only be carried out by the very biggest tech players in the world. Think Google, Meta, and Microsoft. So what does this mean for you, the end user? Well, you're gonna get much better language models in the future, but the free versions may stop to exist. And if you're not paying with money, don't forget you're always paying with your data. Trend number two, smaller language models. Wait a second, Tom. I thought you just said the models were gonna get bigger. What's all this I hear about smaller models? Well, while the major tech players are spending hundreds of millions of dollars making the biggest models with the best results, us mere mortals can't afford to spend that kind of money. So in parallel, we're seeing the rise of the democratized open source smaller language model market. And it turns out in many situations, we don't need the massive models to get great results. Using a much smaller language model, with somewhere between three and seven billion parameters. And okay, that sounds massive, but it's still a hundred times smaller than GPT-4. And fine tuning that model on a particular problem space that you're interested in can produce results as good as, if not better than, GPT-4 and the other large language models. Say for example, I wanna use a large language model to check our company's Twitter profile to gauge yes. Ah, uh, I'm a trained actor. <laughs> Say for example, I want to train an LLM to check our company's Twitter, I mean X's mentions, in order to gauge sentiment about our company. Well, I can train an open source model like Llama 2, specifically on this X information. And then I limit it to only performing sentiment analysis classification on X data. Well, that's fine tuning and it should work very, very well. Plus, it's way cheaper 
and more efficient to use vis-a-vis -vis GPT-4. If you're interested in finding out more, why don't you check out Llama 2 from Meta or Hugging Face, which is a great open source repository with lots of other model architectures out there. This will be most apparent behind the scenes and especially for developers, but you may notice it in IoT and other small lightweight devices that offer LLM or chatbot-like services. This may even be available in some phones as well. Trend three, large integrated multimodal models. Wait, that's a bit of a mouthful. Let's try and break it down. Before, we had large language models. These were models which only worked on text input. Now we have multimodal models. They work on text, images, video, and even audio. So are uh, models like Midjourney and DALI multimodal? Well, also no, because they only work on one input stream. In this case, text to image. So what are some examples of multimodal models? Well, Google has just released BARD, which is a multimodal model, and Google has also released RTX, which is a multimodal model embedded in a robot. Sounds pretty cool, right? And Meta has just released a multimodal model which works with Ray-Ban glasses, the ones that I just ordered. No way. That yes. Yeah, these Ray-Ban glasses sound really amazing. You can be traveling through a foreign country, see a tourist attraction you don't know anything about, and ask the glasses to tell you more about it, or get it to translate a sign from you, or even get it to help you fix a faulty tap in your hotel room. And these multimodal models are gonna get integrated fast into many other products and services. Think anything IoT, edge device, or mobile. That's coming soon, and it's gonna be amazing. So for IoT and edge devices, think things like GoPro cameras, smart fridges, smart doorbells, or anything else that's integrated in your home in a fancy way. Trend number four, independent AI agents. In the digital space, we will see the rise of AI agents very, very soon. This is gonna be a personalized AI bot, which responds to your emails, organizes your calendar, plans trips for you, etc. Then in the legal space, we're gonna see legal AI robots which will be able to challenge parking tickets for you, find out more information about any tax related problems or legal related problems that you might have, and health AI assistance to monitor your health statistics from your Fitbit or whatever, and provide personalized feedback and forward on any complaints to AI doctors or real doctors. Of course, ChatGPT can do some of these tasks for you already, but the big differentiator will be the independence of the assistant. That means it's not gonna need prompting from you in a website. It will simply go about achieving its objectives independent of any input. There are some players already on the scene providing services. Think Microsoft Teams AI Assistant or the Atlassian AI bot. In the legal space, there's a startup called Do Not Pay that already challenges parking tickets for you. And the Google Bard model has some autonomous features already. And don't forget, on the other end of all of these AI assistant transactions we just talked about will be another AI bot. So expect in the near future to see much internet traffic taken over by AI to AI interactions. And trend number five, the rise of fake content. We've seen fake content in the guise of deep fakes, et cetera, for a few years now, but the big differentiator in the near future will be how hard it is for humans to differentiate between real content and fake content. Honestly, I'm finding it really, really hard already, and I don't wanna know how hard it's gonna be in the next couple of years. Don't forget, the quality of this content is only gonna get more believable. It's not gonna get any easier to spot fake content on the internet, whether it's image content, text content, video, or audio. You may have heard in the press about the act Tom Hanks having to issue a warning that an advert supposedly containing him was in fact not him. The same is true of other presenters like Joe Rogan. And some companies are already cashing in on this. Check out HeyGen if you want to be able to create nearly lifelike AI avatars of your own image already. There's a company called Synesthia which makes text to video content which is pretty believable already. And of course, to generate the underlying text, use an app like ChatGPT. So what can we do to improve trust online? Well, it's a really difficult problem to solve, but some people are trying to help. Check out the C2PA protocol, which is a mission aimed at watermarking all AI content so that it's differentiatable from real content. However, it's not all bad news. With every cloud comes a silver lining. Increasingly, the creative industry is gonna be able to leverage these tools and technologies to make more fun, interactive content for us. Imagine putting any actor you like into any film you like, 
or extending your favorite series automatically by the creation of new series using AI. Check out the South Park AI tool, which is already able to do this. I'm not taking a stance on the ethical considerations of this technology. There's definitely positives and negatives, and I'll leave it for the courts and public opinion to decide. All I'm doing is telling you about what's gonna happen in the next couple of years. That's it for now. So those are the main trends I wanted to introduce you today, but don't forget there are lots of other exciting areas that we didn't have time to cover. I hope you're as excited as I am about what's coming up in 2024 and beyond in AI. And don't forget, Although some of the topics we talked about are quite technical, the future of AI is gonna involve everybody. In the last 12 months alone, we've seen AI models move from the edge to the mainstream of society, and that trend is only gonna continue at pace. But remember, the future isn't just something that happens to us, it's something we actively create. So let's stay inspired and try and be an active learner and push the boundaries of what's possible with AI. And to help you with active learning, don't forget that at Career Foundry, we have an amazing online free short course on data analytics. It might say data analytics on the tin and it's not technically about AI, but be assured the core to becoming a good data scientist or machine learning engineer is a strong grasp of data analytics. So be sure to check the course out. The link is in the description below. And if you like AI, why don't you check out this video, which is also really cool. Or in general, check out the Career Foundry channel where there's lots of AI and data science related topics. So go check it out and I look forward to seeing you in there soon. So who knows, maybe the next version of ChatGPT will actually be psychic. Greetings CF enthusiasts. <laughs> 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 right, let's try that.